Hello everyone. Um, so today I wanted to go over, um, I've been looking on a whole lot of YouTube videos for mini travel watercolor kits. Um, my aunt just recently got me into them and I really like it, but um, I'm always going somewhere, I'm always moving around, always driving, uh, so and I don't, I don't like to carry a purse with me or um, any bags, anything like that. I like to travel light, so I usually just have my wallet, my phone, and my keys on me. Um, but I've really gotten into watercoloring, so I wanted to get a couple things that um, could travel with me. And I saw a bunch of different ways to make little affordable travel watercolor kits, so... I'm just going to go over them today. Um, I got two sets of watercolors that I found. The first is this one. Oh, no, this isn't. Okay, this one. This is upside down for you guys. <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so... Um, let me see if I can. Yeah. So it's the Reeves Reeves watercolor palette. It's 18 colors that are in there. And um, these are the, the colors that are available. And then um, she, my aunt was telling me that there's this thing called gouache, which is a more pigmented kind of watercolor, which I went out and I got today because I was actually, I've been watercoloring and I've been having a little bit of a hard time with how translucent it is. I usually like to, you know, get some good paint on there. So um, I went ahead and I got these. They're again by Reeves, another 18 pack for $14.99, which is a really good price. So far, I like the quality of these two. Um, I've only gotten to use the watercolor so far, and I just did a little bit with the gouache, and I thought it was really cool. You barely need any paint, and it's really pigmented, so, yeah. Okay, so the first thing that I want to show you guys is this. This is going to be my little watercolor case, um, for when I have a chance to go stop by somewhere. I live in a scenic rural area, so there's lots of cool places, and I just, like, throw this in the trunk of my car, and it's always there for when I need it. Um, it was, like, a brown box. Sorry about that. So it was a brown box, um, that came with, like, these kinds of little art sets. Um, I got it for $8 or somewhere around $8 at Walmart. And I only got it because of the box. So that stuff I'm going to throw out. I don't really need it. So, but yeah. Oh, oh excuse me. The way I set this up is, um, there we go. So the way I set this up is um, I got the 9 by 12 packs of watercolor paper from like XL, I think is the brand or something. Um, it's the blue one. And then I just cut these in half. And then I they just pop in there and they fit really nice. Um, and then really quick, I want to mention this was an ugly brown color, so I repainted it. The outside is the steel color, but the inside I painted this white paint which actually made a nice enough finish to where I can use this as a really nice palette and the colors stay where they're supposed to. The paint that I used I got at Michael's. It's this Premier Satin Acrylic paint. So this is the one if you guys want to use it. It was like a dollar something. Really cheap but really effective. And then in here I have it's just a bottle of water um, for dipping my brush into. I got this at Michael's too. It was a dollar. It was on my way out near the cashier. It had like some tags in it. I don't know. I just threw that out. Don't need it. Um, I have a bunch of rulers and straight edge 
things here. I have a kneaded eraser, which I actually don't. Well, I guess I could just keep it in there. Um, I have washi tape. I use this for a whole bunch of stuff if I need to, like, tape my water to one corner so that if I jolt this, it won't, like, you know, spill or anything. Or if I want to tape one of these to the back of this and use it like a easel, all of that. It just comes in really handy. So I like to keep it around. Um, these are always good to have around. If you have a palette you want to kind of clip on the side, they're useful. That one's kind of small, though. Um, this is a little mister to keep your stuff um, wet so you can continue to work with it. It was a hand sanitizer thingy that I got from Rayleigh's and then I just threw the hand sanitizer out of it and put water in there and it works great now. This is also for Michaels, the containers they have. The um, This is the top of a mint can. This is what the size of an Altoids can would be. So, hold on. That that's about how much bigger this one is. Okay, and then so that's watercolor. I've been using this. Really like it. This Reeves brand watercolor does dry and crack, like you see these two. Um, but I've been using it every single day, so it hasn't really gotten a chance to fully dry. So they've been staying pretty all right. Um, these two I don't use as much, so they've kind of pooped out on me, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah. And then I use this as a palette. If I don't have this whole thing and I just take this with me, then I can use that as a palette. So and that's that. And then this is where I keep my brushes. I have my pencil, a water brush, which I don't really use. And then these brushes I got for, I don't remember, it was either like $5 or, so, or $7, somewhere in between there, at Walmart. And they're really good because I was um, over at Michael's trying to get brushes and they were like $5 for one or $9 or something. The cheapest was like $3.99, but I couldn't find any water brushes that I wanted. For the $3.99 range, I might have gone there, but anyways, I bought a pack of like 10 really crappy cheap ones that I can't even use for like 7 bucks over there, and that was a useless. I don't think these are watercolor brushes either, but they work great. I think I already said that. I don't remember. And then I have a smudger, which is just in case. So, that's those. Um... As for the gouache, oh, and then this thing. The way I did this, there's a lady on YouTube who shows you how to do this. It's clay. That's how I made the little um, squares in there. Let me see if I can. Yeah. The clay wasn't white. They were out of white. So it's just like this kind of off-white gross color that I don't really like. But um, it's it's working for now. I, I am not going to get nitpicky at this point because it works out fine. The first one I had made was actually this one. As you can see, this one was with white clay. And uh, this actually holds quite a bit of clay. Because if you can see from the side, it goes all the way almost to the edge there. And um, that's how thick this thing is. So it holds a really good amount. This is pretty heavy. This is really nice and heavy. And um, so I cleaned that out of the watercolors because I scooped them out of here and I put them into there and uh, topped them off because there was still some room because those are bigger pots. But this, I just um, kind of cleaned out the watercolor and I put the gouache in there. And then I'm going to, once this dries, because I don't want to, gouache seem to be a lot runnier or mushier than the watercolor for some reason. I don't know why, but it seems to be drying faster. I don't know how this works, so I'm just going to wait until it's reasonably dry to where I can throw this in here and it'll be fine. And um, this is Newman's Own Organics Mints. They're local to my area. At least that's where I've seen them. So yeah, once this is dry, and then I got this for it, so this is what the gouache colors look like. 
and then compare it to the watercolors. They're more opaque and a lot smoother, smoother and softer looking as well. They don't um, allow for as much of the page texture to go through at, through as much as the watercolors do. So, which is fine. I like them. I can't wait to use them. That's gonna be great. Ah, did it? No. Okay. Oh, and as for this, that's just paper towel and this is a makeup sponge. This works great too, so. Okay. Uh, so this will just go in here so that way I have watercolor and gouache with me wherever I go. And there's plenty of room, so that is totally fine. Um, yeah, there we go. Stick that over there. Yep, plenty of room. So that is going to work out just fine. I've already been using this, as you can see, and it's been working really nicely. I'm really happy about it. Um, yeah, I'm not going to be changing this anytime soon. It just, it works too well. So. And then the other thing I wanted to mention. Um, these little corners, right, these came with this box in the package. They were, like, on the edge like this. And um, I keep them in the kit just because you get all your stuff out, right? And then you just stick those on there. And now you have, like, a little easel right here, and I'll just take some wash tape, tape the top of the page here, and then I can just work on this. And then um, the, the cap on this I can use as a palette. So keep those in there. That's not going to work. So that's that one, and um, then I wanted to make an actual travel, travel size thing, which is this guy over here, and this is just gouache, so um, I, here, let me, it's like, I did it this afternoon, so it's been drying. And this is what's in there. So it's just like some more make makeup sponge, um, the eraser, and the eraser there and there, pencil. This is um, obviously paper towel. And then uh, this is a Winsor Newton um, travel palette brush that is super compact. So it just kind of comes apart like that. Super teeny tiny and useful. And then. Along with that, this will be my little water container for it. I don't remember where I got this or what. Wait, what does it say? Howard Light by Honeywell. I don't know. don't know what that is, but <laughs> I have it. And then um, the way I put those in there is I got... And these are... If you don't want to have to buy half pans or anything like that, that are ridiculously expensive. I mean, seriously. This is why I wanted to make my own little kits because what they had at the store was so... Ah, oh, just, it's too much. You know what I mean? And I'm just getting into this. I'm not ready to spend all my money all willy-nilly like that. So I got a dentine ice pack with the gum... That comes in like 
these little containers, you guys know what I'm talking about. These are the the gum containers. Um, all I did was just chop them up like so and like so and I didn't take the um, plastic thing off because now all you do is just where, squeeze it and it comes off on its own so a lot less work and then you have this cute little water paint or gouache little um, half pan pretty much this is half pan size so that is how you do it I was able to fit 12. The reason why I wanted to put it in the lid is because they're so shallow, so they will fit perfectly in the lid, and that way you can keep big stuff over here and have enough space for it instead of just throwing things on top of these, right? Um, the only thing you have to realize when you do that is you have to leave space on the edges so that this can close properly. But um, yeah, 12 colors fit in there just fine. I just stuck those in there with some glue. And I can't wait to use it. But this, I'm not going to close it because it's not dry yet and it's going to flop around all crazy. Um, this is my little swatch. The other reason I like to make these is basically a piece of watercolor paper. I put the swatch on and then I put packing tape. Where is it? I put this stuff this stuff on there and then washi tape on the edges and um, I just put this little thing on here so I can pick it up easily the reason why I like to have this is if I have to close this when these are still wet I just stick this on top and it doesn't matter if paints get on here because I could just wipe it off because it's a smooth surface so I could just stick those on top and it protects everything in here from getting paints on it so those are pretty useful to have that's why I usually make one for all my kids. Um, yeah. So, this is what I think. <sighs> that goes with it. I got another one of those um, mint things and I popped the lid off of it. And this is the um, palette, mixing palette for this. So, I just get a little one of these binder clips. Yeah, I just stick it on there. Oh wait, no. Yeah. So you just choo -choo -choo. bam, bam, bam. So it works really great. And then the paint that I painted in here is the same paint right here. Just because I knew it would have the right kind of finish so I can um, mix here properly. So yeah. And then I went ahead, just because I wanted this whole thing to be um, very, very easy to take with me wherever I wanted, I also went ahead and um, made my own little watercolor sketchbook. So... I just made this. Um, this is like the easiest thing I've ever made in my life. This is just rubber bands. Literally rubber bands and tape are the only thing holding this together. The two covers are made out of chipboard and then the spine is a whole separate section made out of chipboard that has um, a little slot chopped out of there like that so that the um, rubber bands stay in there. Ah. Yeah. There it is. So they stay in there properly um, like a little divot and then it has the same on the bottom. 
This is just washi tape keeping those aligned properly. But yeah, those are the rubber bands. Um, so the spine and the two sides are held together by packing tape again on both sides. And then I went ahead and stuck a huge thing of like scrapbook paper. And again, I just taped it to the insides. And then I went ahead and put the signatures in on the rubber bands. So it's just two pages each. Because if you put too many, it sticks out funny. So I just have two pages. Um, one, two. One, two, four. 8, 12, 16, 20, 4, 8, 30, um, 60, so 60 pages. If I count front and back, there's 60 in here, which is a lot. And then when I'm done using them, I can just slip these out and refill it. And uh, again, these are the same 9 by 12 paper cut in half and then fold it over in half again. So basically I'm just going to have this one. I'm going to take these out real quick cuz I don't want to mess with that cuz it's not um dry yet. But I'll just have it all together like this. Put my rubber band around that mess there. Put another rubber band so it's not so flimsy. Not the fanciest, you know, but um, yeah. Definitely gets the job done. So, that's that. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys got some good ideas of some things you can use. I hope this was helpful. If you guys have any questions on anything that I used that I didn't mention, or um, you guys need help with figuring stuff out, Go ahead and leave a message below, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for stopping by and for watching, and you have a great day.